Hi everyone, this is Dee from Everyday VR, and I am here today to demonstrate a project I've, working, I've been working on the last few days. It's called Fake Foveated Rendering. Uh, this is based on the Oculus World Demo project that comes with the uh, Oculus SDK. It is a sample project. It is based on the Tuscany assets, which is um, you have this little house. It's by the sea. It's a very simple little demo. It doesn't have any of the uh, animations and sounds of the full Tuscany demo. Um, it's really intended to just demonstrate how to create a native C++ application for the Oculus Rift. And I've modified it to add a new feature. Uh, the new feature is that the area in the center of the screen, where you see that white cross, that white circle, is going to be in much higher quality than the area around the edges of the screen. And I'm doing this using the layers and compositing support in the latest Oculus SDK 0.6.0. Point one. Uh, you do have to have this version of the SDK to try this project. If you want to try this project out yourself on your own DK2, you can go ahead and download it. The link is in the description. I would love to get your feedback about it. Again, you do require the 0601 runtime or higher. Um, so it's very subtle right now. I can see it, um, but I'm going to go ahead and modify my settings so that you guys can see it more clearly in the video. I brought up the menu by pressing tab, and then I'm going to go into render target. I've added, um, I've added some settings here. So limit FOV, this sets the FOV of the, the full screen, which is currently the default, um, just filling the whole field of vision of DK2. And limit FOV foveal sets the size of the center. Pixel density sets the pixel density of the outer part of the screen. And pixel density foveal says the sets the pixel density of the inner part. So I'm going to lower this all the way down as low as it'll go to make it super obvious what's going on. So now the center of the screen is in super high quality. It's actually even higher quality than it would normally be. And the outer part of the screen is very blurry. And it smoothly blends between the two. And so this is intended to demonstrate a future technology that is under development called foveated rendering. Um, and the way foveated rendering works is it, it's based on eye tracking. And it keeps track of where your eyes are looking at any given time and renders the part of the scene your eyes are looking at um, in higher quality and renders the rest of the scene in lower quality. And by doing this, by focusing all of your GPU's rendering power and effort on just the part of the screen that you're looking directly at, you can get much better performance and much better quality at the same time. And, um, and this is actually very important for VR because as, uh, as both angular resolution of headsets increases and field of view increases, both of those make foveated rendering more effective because the, um, the region of your eye that can see in detail called the fovea, that's the part of your retina that has lots of a really dense uh, accumulation of cells that can see a lot of detail, is actually very small. It's a very small region. And the way, that you've, the way that you look at things in real life is you look all around the scene and you look at lots of different parts of the scene in detail and you remember what you saw and you use that to construct a detailed view of the scene. So it's actually wasteful to render the whole scene in detail because the only part you're able to see in detail is the part that's falling in the fovea of your retina. Um, and foveated rendering takes advantage of that. The catch is that you need really fast eye tracking hardware to pull it off. So this is one region, uh, one reason I'm really excited about the Fove Kickstarter that is running right now. And in fact, I believe it only has about 30 hours left in it. So if you're excited about this kind of technology, definitely give that Kickstarter a look. I'll link it in the description. I'll also link this project in the description if you want to try it on your own DK2. You do need to have the very latest SDK, 0.6. 0.1, or rather runtime, or else it will not work. It will crash. So don't do it. Um, and I'm just going to show you a few of the features here. So um, this is a fake foveated rendering demo because I do not have eye tracking hardware or technology. I only have DK2. So I'm just assuming that you're always looking right in the center of the screen, right in that cross. And that lets me uh, accomplish essentially foveated rendering without dealing with the hardware problems. So 
I'm going to go ahead. Um, so right now you can, I can, this is actually much blurrier than I would normally have this. And I can, I can, um, I can detect that the blurring is happening in my peripheral vision, even though I'm not looking at it because there's just too much blur. But if I increase the density to what I had it before, which was about eh, 75, 75, so it's still lower quality than default, but at this point, it's almost impossible if I'm looking in the center of the screen for me to tell that there's any lowering of quality between the central region and the peripheral vision because in the edges of my vision, I cannot, I cannot see enough detail to tell that that area is actually at a lower level of quality than the center of my vision. The center of my vision, meanwhile, is set to 2.0, which is twice, uh, twice, twice the resolution in both dimensions, width and height, of the default resolution of the render target. So I'm getting a lot better anti-aliasing, a lot better detail than I would even if I just ran this application normally. Now, if I walk over here up to the fountain, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stand over here by the fountain, and I'm going to look right at the top of the fountain here. So I'm looking at the top of the fountain. I see the fountain in detail. I see the window behind it in detail. But now if I move my, if I hold my head still and I move my eyes over to the left, I'll see that those potted plants next to the house and those blinds on the front of the house are actually quite blurry. And that's because only the area in the middle of the circle and near the circle is guaranteed to be sharp and detailed. So if I keep my eyes there, everything will appear to be detailed. If I move my eyes outside the circle toward any edge of the screen, it'll seem much blurrier. So if I had eye tracking technology, it would actually be able to move the circle to follow my eyes wherever they go on the screen. So it would be impossible for me to move my eyes away from the circle and it would just be sharp all the time. So this is one reason I'm really excited, probably the main reason I'm really excited about eye tracking technology. Fove has not yet demonstrated this on their headset, but I believe they have all of the ingredients they need to make it work. And I'm hoping that by the time they ship next year, I'll be able to try real foveated rendering firsthand and, and I'll be able to give impressions of it and what it feels like. And I'll be able to run vastly graphically superior experiences to traditional ones on my ordinary GPU and take advantage of the foveated rendering to allow them to scale more effectively. And um, so before I get out of here, I want to show you a few more things I can do. So I can set the size of the region in the middle. So right now it looks like this, as you can see. I can make it smaller. So now it's very small, and even when it's very small, um, as long as my eyes are trained exactly in the middle of it, and I set this to something reasonable, as long as my eyes are right, right in the middle of the cross, and I don't move them even a little bit, it still works, even at this very, very um, reduced setting, because the fovea of the human eye is so small that there's just, um, there's, there's there's not a lot that it can see. Not uh, it doesn't cover a very large area. And so even with this very small angular area, I can't tell as long as I'm focused right in the middle of the cross that it is um, only rendering that area in detail. And in fact, if I go ahead and turn this up to say 1.0, now the rest the the area right in the middle. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to render the area in the middle now at the maximum quality, 2.5. So if I press spacebar, it tells me that the resolution it's using for the render target for the whole screen is 2364 by 1464. This is the de default render target size on the Oculus Rift DK2. And additionally, for that circle in the middle of the screen, it's using a render target of size 968.480 times 484. So it's quite small. Because of its small angular size, it doesn't take up many pixels. It's very fast to render. But it gives me this new added benefit where I can look directly at any object. And while I'm looking directly at it, I can see a great deal more detail, have much better anti-aliasing on that object. While in the rest of the scene, I still have the same level of quality that I would normally have. And this is, um, this is a very cheap way 
to allow you to get much better quality in the center of the screen while, without sacrificing any quality anywhere else. Conversely, I can, so I'm going to go ahead and expand it now. So right now it's super small. And if I expand it to say, oops, I want to lower the pixel density a bit. So if I expand it to, I'm going to actually lower the pixel density to the default of 1.0. And I'm going to expand it until it fills most of my screen here. I'm going to do, say, 78 degrees. And then I'm going to increase this to about 0.5. So now the inner region is filling most of my screen. And the outer region is only in the far edges of the screen. And I've decreased the pixel density of that outer region to 0.5. Now my render targets have resolution 1182 by 732 and 1810 by 905. So the combined resolution is quite a bit lower, actually, than it originally was. And I can actually run this at a higher frame rate, potentially. Well, my GPU is able to run all this at a full frame rate. But if I had a weaker GPU, I would be able to run this at a higher frame rate than I otherwise could using the default settings by just rendering the far edges of the screen at a lower quality level. And the difference is very, very subtle. Like even if I move my eyes toward the edges, um, it's difficult for me to tell that it's rendering them at lower quality because of how the barrel distortion works. It actually compresses the edges of the screen and super samples that part of the render target. So this is um, more like what NVIDIA is doing with their multi-res shading tool. Um, multi-res shading is a technology that's part of GameWorks VR. Gameworks VR is NVIDIA's new VR extensions that they are soon releasing. And multi-res shading is a technique that is going to render the center of the screen at normal quality while rendering the edges of the screen at reduced quality. And this is typically either very subtle or completely transparent because, again, the render target is super sampled and compressed in the outer reaches of the screen. So this is, gives you a good idea of what multi-res sampling could look like, in addition to allowing you to explore the experience of foveated rendering. So this is just a little demo I've been working on. If you have a DK2, definitely grab this and see how it feels and what it looks like. And if you're excited about foveated rendering, then definitely check out the Fove Kickstarter because they don't have a lot of hours left. And I'm hoping that they will sell as many headsets as they can. So again, this is, the, the Fove headset is not a replacement for a Rift consumer version. It's not a replacement for a Vive. It, if, if, you, if you only get one headset, you should get either the Vive or the Oculus Rift. If you only get two, you should get both the Vive and the Oculus Rift. But if you have a little extra cash to spare and you want to invest in the future of the, the exciting new features in VR headsets, then uh, investing in Fove is a great way to get early access to these very cool new technologies that will change how we interact with things in terms of input, that will change how uh, the kind of rich experiences we can get with good performance on ordinary GPUs, and, and will provide a whole host of additional benefits. Uh, foveated rendering, incidentally, is also really important for, um, ultimate will, ultimately will be important for wireless uh, PC headsets because it, re it massively reduces the bandwidth that needs to be transmitted from the PC to the headset. You only have to translate, uh, transfer the center region at high resolution and the outer region can be transferred at lower resolution and then they can be composited automatically by your headset in hardware. And so that's a way um, that you can massively, re massively reduce the bandwidth required, which is the main limitation on, uh, on wireless video uh, right now. Anyway, so this has been my fake foveated rendering demo. Go ahead and download it and give it a try. Let me know what settings you explore, how they feel for you. Let me know if you have any trouble with it. And that is all for today. Everybody have a great every day.